Hello, today we're going to look at this very important process called diffusion. Now, you may have had this explained to you in the following way. So here we have a can or a container of some perfume or some deodorant, something like that. And that can be sprayed in one corner or one part of the room. And if there are people in the room, for example, in a classroom, that smell will eventually spread across the room and each person in order of how far they are away will begin to smell the perfume so as we go through each one further and further away can smell it that one at the end doesn't seem too impressed but that's the way it works what we have is the smell spreading across the room now in fact what's actually spreading across the room are the particles that are in the perfume now we could look at a slightly more accurate version or actually a version of diffusion that is more likely to happen in living things and we can demonstrate it by showing a beaker of water and a crystal that's at the bottom there that crystal can dissolve in the water and if you left it over a period of a few hours what you would see is the crystal would dissolve and over time it would then dissolve and spread into the water in the beaker so this is another way of, of seeing how diffusion works. Now we can use this idea to give ourselves a definition of diffusion and the, the, pro and the way the process works. Here I've magnified into two parts of the beaker. So there you can see the particles, the particles in red or that kind of burgundy color. And those particles are in solution. In other words, they're dissolved in water. And as you can see in the bottom diagram there, they're in a higher concentration than in the other diagram. Now it's important that we use the word higher because it automatically gives a comparison. And that helps us with that definition. The particles in the diagram above, they're still in solution, but you can see they're in a lower concentration compared to the diagram below. And because of this, what tends to happen is that the particles spread. You can see them spreading out into the water in that direction. We say there is a net movement of particles because they all move around in all directions, but they overall move outwards. How can we put that into a definition? Well, here it is. A very important one to remember. Diffusion is the spreading out of particles of any substance in solution or particles of a gas and we get the net movement from an area of higher concentration to an area of lower concentration. Okay, so that's that definition. Very important to know and remember that. And the diagram, remembering the diagram will help you remember that. So it's worth making a note of that and highlighting it. A very important definition. Now, you also need to know about where, defini uh, where diffusion happens in living things. So we've got a couple of examples that we're going to go through. And in the diagram below, I've got some blood vessels, some small blood vessels called capillaries, and they are delivering substances to the cells. So we've got these cells here. In the capillaries, we've got red blood cells, and you may remember that red blood cells carry oxygen. And these are the body cells that would be in need of that oxygen. So this blood has just come from the lungs. So it's got just collected oxygen from the lungs that's been uh, from the air that's been breathed in so the concentration of oxygen in the red blood cells is going to be higher than in the body cells so we've got a higher concentration of oxygen so you can then imagine that that oxygen is going to diffuse into the cells into the body cells from the red blood cells in the blood that's supplying those cells as well it's going to have a lower concentration of carbon dioxide Carbon dioxide breathed in through the air has a lower concentration than that in the cells. So you can imagine then that the carbon dioxide will diffuse out from the cells where it's being made by respiration into the liquid part of the blood. So that's two examples of things that move in and out. We usually refer to that as gas exchange. Something else the cells do actually is also make a substance called urea. And urea is a waste product, mostly made by liver cells, but other cells make it as well. And because they make this waste product, it's going to be found in a higher concentration in the cells than in the blood. So as you may have already guessed, that urea is going to diffuse out of the cells 
into the liquid part of the blood. Okay, so important to remember that um, oxygen comes from the red blood cells into the cells, into the body cells, and the other substances are exchanged with the liquid part of the blood. Most of the oxygen is carried in red blood cells. So, we also need to talk about factors that affect the rate of diffusion, or in other words, the speed of diffusion and how quickly it works. And these are three important ones that you need to know about. The first one is linked to the difference in concentrations of the substance. So here I've got a cell that's living in water. It needs oxygen to carry out respiration. And you can see here that I've drawn a high concentration on the outside, a very high concentration of oxygen on the outside compared to the inside. We say there is a high concentration gradient. There is a big difference in the concentration outside compared to inside. And so we're going to have quite a rapid rate of diffusion into the cell. If we increase the concentration of oxygen in the cell like this, so there's still a difference in concentration, but not as much as before. We can say there is a low or lower concentration gradient. And so while diffusion still happens, it happens at a slower rate. So we get a lower rate of diffusion. And that's because in the second example there, the difference in concentration is less than in that was less in the, than in the first example. The temperature also has an effect. When we raise the temperature, particles are able to move faster and the reason they move faster is because they have higher kinetic energy. Higher temperature means higher kinetic energy of particles and therefore diffusion happens more rapidly with higher temperatures. Another factor is the surface area of the membrane. Now imagine this living thing was shaped like I've drawn on the right. That would result in a lower surface area because we have less folded bits on the membrane. So here you can see if I traced around it there is more surface in the first diagram than in the second. And so therefore, lower surface area will result in slower diffusion and therefore slower exchange of substances, for example, carbon dioxide and oxygen. Okay, so that's an overview of a definition of diffusion, examples of where it happens in living things and factors that affect how quickly it works. Thanks for watching. I'll see you again soon.